Hello everyone and welcome to the Internet Computer Developer Journey. My name is Jesse, and I'm going to be your guide throughout this Developer Journey series. This Developer Journey tutorial series is designed to bring developers of all skill levels throughout the fundamentals and advanced concepts and development workflows on the Internet Computer. Throughout this journey, we're going to cover all different topics and features of the Internet Computer and learn how they can be integrated into different development workflows in order to create decentralized applications or dApps. To get started today, I just want to show everyone where the accompanying documentation for the the developer journey series is because we're going to be referencing it quite a bit and following it pretty closely in this video version of the series. So if we go to the internetcomputer.org, in this top navigation bar, we're going to see a develop tab. We're going to click on that develop tab and then we're going to select developer docs. From the developer docs homepage, we're going to select tutorials and then we're going to see an overview of all of the tutorials in this section. Now, if you scroll down, you can see that the developer journey tutorials are highlighted in the top and we're just going to go over the brief overview and outline of this developer journey and what exactly we're going to cover. So we are in module 0.1, the overview of the internet computer. This is the very first module in both the video series and the written tutorial series. And it's the first module of level zero pre-flight operations. So all of the levels in this tutorial series are named after space themes since we ultimately want to be an internet computer astronaut by the end of this. So in order to be a good astronaut, we need to first lay the groundwork and get our pre-flight operations out of the way. So that's what this level zero category represents. In this category, we're going to get a brief overview of what the internet computer is and how it works. We're going to cover some of the fundamental internet computer terminology, including phrases and tools that we'll need to be familiar with throughout our journey. We're going to set up our developer environment, and then we're going to get a more in-depth introduction into some of the core features and tools that we'll be using throughout our journey, including canisters, languages such as Motoko, and DFX. In level one, the space cadet level, we're going to start out with exploring a live demo of a canister deployed to the Motoko playground in order to get a sneak preview into what we'll be building. Then we're going to start with some Motoko fundamentals in Motoko level one, then we're going to dive right into developing and deploying our very first decentralized application. And we're also going to learn about cycles and how to acquire and use them. Cycles are a form of currency that is used to pay for the resources that our dApps use when deployed on the internet computer. We're also then going to take a look at managing the canisters that are in our dApp and then continue that into level two, the space explorer level. We're going to dive into some more advanced can canister functionality, such as canister upgrades, storage, and data persistence, advanced canister calls, and also using third-party canisters. We're going to get an introduction to Candid, which is an interface description language. We're also going to cover unit integration and end-to-end -end testing, which is an important development workflow to assure that our code is functioning as expected before we deploy on the main net. We're going to wrap up level two with the Motoko level two module. Moving through level three, the space engineer level, we're going to cover some more advanced features and tools within the internet computer, including Motoko package managers, HTTPS outcalls, certified data, agents and identities and authentication. And we're also going to continue learning more about Motoko in Motoko level three. Moving into level four, the space pilot level, as we get a little bit closer to becoming that internet computer astronaut, we're going to dive into the more advanced concepts that are within different development workflows on the internet computer, such as using the ICP ledger, ICRC1 tokens, CKBTC and the IC's Bitcoin integration, and the NNS governance and token staking. Finally, in level five, in the internet computer astronaut level, to finish out our journey, we're going to learn about developing an encrypted node stamp using VETKD, which is an advanced cryptography 
mechanism. We're going to learn about developing a DAP using the new IC Ethereum integration. We're going to create a decentralized exchange. We're going to create NFTs. And then lastly, we're going to create and locally deploy an SNS. To end the series, we're going to look at next steps and where you can go once you become an internet computer astronaut, such as how to apply for our developer grants and how to connect with our developer community on places like Discord and the forum. So now that we've covered the overview of what this developer journey series is going to cover, let's take a look at the component for this very first module, level 0.1, overview of the internet computer, which I already have open in this tab. So within this documentation, I've provided a overview of the internet computer at a very high level. So it includes things, as you can see on the table of contents on the right side of the page here. Um, it talks about the protocol stack, the chain key cryptography feature, a brief overview of canisters and smart contracts, tokens, governance, etc. For this video, though, I think it's a lot more beneficial to show a visualization of some of these different features and places to look for more information on those features. So before we take a look at how to visualize and learn a bit more about all of these terms and features of the internet computer, what is the internet computer? The internet computer is a secure and transparent blockchain based network that can be used to host data and programs. Programs and their data are both hosted on chain on the internet computer, and they're often referred to as decentralized applications or dApps. Dapps are created by the development of smart contracts, which on the internet computer are known as canisters because a canister contains the program's code and its state. We'll dive a lot more into canisters and different types of canisters, and of course, how to develop your own canisters. But for now, it's just important to know that canisters are at the core of all IC development. We're also going to take a look at the architecture of the internet computer, which is made up of nodes in different groups called subnets. So starting at the internetcomputer.org webpage, if we go to the learn and then the ICP dashboard link at the bottom of the learn tab, this is going to open up the ICP dashboard. And this is my favorite way to visualize exactly what the internet computer looks like since it shows all of the nodes currently running the internet computer replica or a version of it. Now, each subnet on the internet computer runs their own version of the replica. So individual subnets run their own version of consensus. This is an intentional design that is very important to the architecture of the internet computer and how applications are deployed within nodes um, and within subnets. But we'll get into all of that in a later module. For now, it's just important to know that this graph on the bottom here showcases all of the nodes that are currently online on the network. They are grouped on this map by geographic location. The blue circles here are not um, indicative of the subnets. They're just indicative of the nodes geographic locations and how many nodes are in each geographic location. If we want to get a bit more information about nodes and subnets specifically, we can take a look at some of these stats and the hyperlinks that are added in the different categories here. For example, the subnets link, we can click on and we can take a look at each of the subnets by their ID, the type of subnet that they are. So if they are an application subnet, if they are a system subnet, um, and then how many nodes are total in that subnet. And if we click on that ID, we can see where each of the nodes that make up that subnet are located across the globe. And we can also take a look at some additional statistics about that subnet, such as how many blocks it has processed, how many canisters it's currently running, what its finalization rate of the blocks are, and its cycles burn rate. And then on the bottom, we can take an additional closer look at the individual nodes that make up the subnet, including their location, the data center that they're in, and specifically who the node provider is for that node. So if we go back to the homepage here, 
If we scroll down a bit more, we can take a look at some of the overview statistics, such as the total size of all canisters states on the internet computer currently, the total number of internet identities, the total supply of ICP, which ICP is the native token of the internet computer, and internet identities are the native authentication method for the internet computer. We can also take a look at the total supply of CKBTC, which is chain key Bitcoin, or a Bitcoin token that is on the internet computer that is backed one to one by Bitcoin that uses the internet computer's chain key cryptography in order to enable the functionality of that coin. In the future, there are also plans for CKETH, which will be a one to one backed Ethereum chain key coin and we're going to touch the ethereum in integration in a later module like we covered in the overview of the developer journey toward the bottom of this overview we can also take a look at the total number of nns proposals so the nns is the network nervous system which is the internet computer's governing body it is a dao or a decentralized autonomous organization and all changes to the internet computer are submitted through an NNS proposal. So on the dashboard, underneath the overview, we get a bit more detailed information about canisters and transactions, the cycle burn rate, the blocks funnelization rate that we saw as a subnet infographic as well. We can also take a look at the conversion rate from ICP into cycles. So like I briefly mentioned when we, were, when we were going through the overview, cycles are a form of currency that is used to pay for the resources used by canisters on the internet computer. In order to get cycles, you need to transfer ICP into cycles. And so this is a graph showing that conversion rate. Then we've got a graph about power consumption of the nodes some information about the latest transactions, some additional details about the NNS proposals, and we can take a look at tags such as um, this top proposal is about updating the config of a node operator, and so the topic is a node admin. Then we can also take a detailed look at neurons, subnets, data centers, node providers, and lastly, node machines. So some of these stats we saw on that subnet detail page, but um, the ones that are reflected on this main dashboard reflect the entirety of the internet computer, not just that one subnet. So let's take a look on the tutorial for this module. We can see that we've covered tokens, governance, the NNS. We really haven't dug deeper into the protocol stack though. So let's do that now. So the internet computer protocol is a four layer stack that runs on the node of each subnet. Each subnet is running their own version of the replica or the replicated state machine. And they're able to operate independently from other subnets by using asynchronous messages between different subnets. Now, I will briefly go through the protocol stack and just what each layer does. But if you want to learn even more than what is in this page of documentation here, you can go to learn and then how it works from the internet computer homepage. And this is a very in-depth document that goes deeper into how each core functionality of the architecture works and also gives links for even deeper uh, deep dives into all of these technologies. But so the ICP is comprised of the peer-to-peer, -peer, consensus, message routing, and execution layer. The peer-to-peer -peer layer is the communication between the nodes in the subnet. The consensus layer is responsible for assuring that all of the nodes on the subnet agree on the messages that are processed on the subnet in the order that they're processed in. A unique aspect of consensus on the IC is that it provides cryptographically guaranteed finality, which is different in comparison to a lot of other consensus protocols, such as Bitcoin, which uses probabilistic finality. The message routing layer is responsible for receiving the block of messages from the consensus layer and then putting those into the input queues of the target canister. And then lastly, the execution layer is responsible for executing the canister smart contract code. 
So then if we want to talk a little bit more about canisters, like I mentioned, a canister is both code and state. A canister is able to define functions that can be called by external services, such as browsers and mobile apps, or they can be called by other canisters. Canisters and subnets communicate with asynchronous messages. That's because the internet computer uses an asynchronous ex execution environment. Canister code can be written in a number of different languages. As long as the language can be compiled into WASM or WebAssembly, it can be used to write canister code on the internet computer. Currently, Definity supports Motoko and Rust through the IC SDK, which we're going to use quite frequently in this developer journey. But there are also several community developed SDKs for Python, TypeScript, and all different languages. Let's talk about cycles a little bit more. So like I mentioned, cycles are used to pay for a canister's resources. So that includes network bandwidth, memory, computational power. Each execution performed by a canister that's deployed on the mainnet has a cost of cycles. So it could be a transaction to another canister. It could be an HTTPS out call. It could be using a bit of bandwidth or RAM. All of that costs cycles. And we're going to talk a lot more about cycles and exactly what they are and why they're used. But that's a term that you should get familiar with understanding its important role in your development journey. The internet identity is the internet computer's native form of authentication. It is an advanced form of cryptographic authentication and it replaces traditional usernames and passwords. Um, and we're going to have a whole module dedicated to the internet identity. So that's going to wrap things up for this very first module of the developer journey. Remember that there is accompanying documentation for all of the developer journey videos. So you can follow along through the documentation while you go through the video, or you can only watch the video or only use the documentation, whichever you prefer. If you have any questions or comments, there will be a form link in the description of this video for you to contribute to and let us know your feedback on the developer journey. If you have any questions or suggestions, we'll also provide links to our Discord community if you want to get more involved with other developers that are currently going through their developer journey. And in the next episode, we will take a look at the internet computer terminology and dive deeper into some of the different phrases and terms that we'll be seeing throughout our journey. All right, we'll see everyone next time. Take care.